After creating the signature sound of Mass Effect and leading the team on Mass Effect 2, Jack Wall decided to move on, leaving Sam Hewlett and a new team of composers to shape the trilogy's conclusion. I think it's healthy to do that after a period of time, because you, you want to keep it fresh and you want to keep it, keep it moving. And I'm really busy with these projects, I can't wait to talk to you about the next things I'm doing. Previously, uh, the music would, would go through Jack. You know, we'd write tunes and Jack would kind of get a chance to listen to it first. On Mass Effect 3, Bioware was kind of the music director, in a sense. So we would write tunes that were assigned to us and, and Bioware would basically just be the direct end, end point of that feedback loop. My name is Christopher Lennertz and I'm a composer for uh, film and TV and games. Um, I got my first uh, start in games on uh, Medal of Honor. I had a really good relationship with Steve Schnur, who's the head of music at EA. So when the opportunity on, on Mass Effect 2, uh, in terms of some of the download music came up, um, they wanted something that was really sort of orchestral and, and dark in nature, and, and Steve knew I did that. And so he introduced me to Rob Blake, who was the audio director. Um, on, on that, and, and, uh, and Rob was also the audio director on, on Mass Effect 3. Hi, I'm Sasha Dikijan. I'm Chris Velasco. Uh, I've also worked on the God of War series, Clive Barker's Jericho. Stuff like that. When we got the call, was uh, I mean the pressure was on. You know, it was like immediately when we knew Mass Effect Three. I mean, luckily we were involved with the DLCs, which sort of told the company that we can do it. But now that we're working on Three, it was sort of like all eyes on us, and everybody was like, "Oh man, this is better be good." You know, our agent was like, "You know, this better be good." <laughs> you you know sit down and you work your ass up. I think one of the important things that we wanted to do is that uh, I think most people agree that the first one was really it had a really unique sound to it. So we kind of wanted to bring that back, maybe a bit more edgy, uh, just because the story just lends uh, itself to uh, you know be a bit darker. It was kind of a hybrid between one and two, I think, with the thing we kind of brought our own style to it. It's hard, you know, to comment on a franchise that's sort of established, uh, you know, we got a lot of other composers and, you know, they have high expectations, obviously, the company. I think the challenge for myself was to, that I said, okay, don't, I'm not going to use a lot of virtual instruments, meaning in the computer. I wanted to use hardware, real old synth, to give that sort of evangelist sound. Chris is doing the orchestra side, I do the electronic stuff, I do all the engineering too, the mixing and everything. Yeah, just really works out. We, we complement each other's styles well. It's almost like these six, seven years of working together kind of led up to that point to uh, collaborate on Mass Effect 3. We kind of had to shift gears writing the music um, from more of an emotional standpoint, you know, with the stakes being higher and kind of being the end of the trilogy, we changed the style a bit. There's a lot of piano pieces, for example. Um, there's some string pieces that are just kind of, they tug at your heartstrings. I, I actually just came off a project called Red Orchestra II. Um, it's World War II and it's very heavy and depressing, so that actually kind of helped to have that experience scoring for such uh, heavy material and then segue into Mass Effect 3 with, you know, not quite as tragic as, well, I guess it's, it's a galactic war, so it's pretty heavy as well.
It was kind of a, a fine line, I think, to walk because it, the story is, you know, this is the, the culmination of the trilogy and it is pretty over the top dramatic. So there's a, a tendency to maybe go overboard with the music and uh, which I think is the wrong thing to do. It, it sort of lessens the impact if you're, if you're pounding people like, oh, it's sad, it's sad. And it doesn't have to be always a huge choir, you know, it can be just like a sad voice, you know, that we uh, put into the tracks uh, here and there. Even though the, the third one is really, you know, more dramatic and darker and, you know, I think we try to stay minimalist with the music. One of the things that, that I know he brought me on for was he really wanted me to take the, uh, the Krogan aspect of the game and the introduction of, of the main female character. And to me, that was, that was right up my alley because it had some broad orchestral expansive scope, but it also had some really elegic, touching, emotional moments, which is something I do a lot in film. And it's also something I did a lot uh, in some of the more somber moments of, Ma of Medal of Honor. I love writing music that has a bit of a tragic approach to it. Um, and, and I was fortunate enough, about two years ago, I went to uh, Spain for the Ubuda Film Music Festival and uh, I ended up meeting Elizabeth Scott, who is a, a fantastic voice. If you don't know her name, you know her voice because she was, you know, all the female vocals in Passion of the Christ and uh, Narnia. We ended up using Elizabeth to do the vocals for Eve's character, and that was the thing that, that made it so it would really grab on and sort of touch your heart and, 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 and make you feel like this is bigger than just a game. And I think, I think that real human approach and taking someone who's got such a voice like Elizabeth does, that just sort of float, it sort of floats above. And, you know, and I just think that, to me, that, that was something that really brought the whole part to life. It's always interesting to try to figure out what otherworldly or futuristic or sci-fi means in terms of music, because oddly enough, ever since you know, ever since Star Wars, everyone sort of assumes that sci-fi means early 20th century classical orchestral music, and that's not necessarily the case. So there's always been this opportunity of of trying to figure out what's next, um, what's what's sort of futuristic in terms of where music would be. One of the things that I felt like is that music never discounts what's come before it. So I don't think you would completely lose the orchestra. I think you would add to the orchestra. I had uh, a programmer, uh, Mike Patty, who was actually here in the studio as well, who's really fantastic. And, and uh, between him and I, we, we came up with quite a few uh, synth sounds. Some of them were, were you know morphed sounds that we got, um, and some of them were you know sort of program from scratch. What we wanted to do was really give it uh, its own identity. That particular track uh, in that level I think works really well because like you said it represents what I personally hear from take from Mass Effect 1 when I first played it. It's supposed to be dark, but not too crazy dark, you know, more cool. And I think that arpeggio you hear in the beginning, it's sort of representing the Geth. The direction was for this to be more electronic, just to represent the, you know, the Geth, and not to have a too much orchestral element. It really works really well in the game, because uh, there is uh, different variations of that track. So what you hear on the soundtrack is actually an edit of, uh, I, think, I believe, two pieces together. The ambient cues are my personal favorite to write, uh, just because one thing I love about Mass Effect is the sort of like adventure RPG part where you just walk around, you discover stuff, or you know, learn things about the story. And so um, I think these little moments are important to sort of keep the 
the energy and the vibe going on, but without sort of interrupting the player and saying, okay, here's a melody now. Yeah, I think the ambient cues are more important for setting the tone and, and pushing the story than the, than the action stuff, because you know you're in a fight. Um, you don't need the music to tell you that, but, but the ambient stuff is a, really kind of sets the, sets the stage for the level you're in. There is one level called the Sanctuary. The Sanctuary was supposed to be this haven where people, you know, sort of just live their lives. But it's, it's you come in and it's this huge environment. Uh, it's, it's really sort of cleanish, utopian, I think that's the word for it, you know? And it's really, uh, it, it's totally empty. Nobody knows what's going on. So that's like the perfect setup for like a great ambient cue. It's almost like a painter with, with a sound palette. What does fit to this, it's sort of cold, but it's empty, and it's empty, it's deserted, uh, but it's utopian, so it's supposed to be nice, and so it can't be too evil, it's not a cave, you know what I mean? So you start playing around with sounds, and um, you just try different things, and then you come to some point where you just watch the video, and you play whatever you have, and suddenly it works. You get these visuals of scenes that we're scoring and you take that in and, and Mars for example on Mass Effect 3 is a very kind of um, you know it's, it's sandy it's red it's gr it's a gritty environment almost um, like an alien sort of sound and that's why it shows more more of a synth approach um, with orchestral elements mixed into it I, I usually lean towards orchestral elements uh, for more organic settings I still really like the uh, the Reaper chase cue. It's just it's just big and epic, and it's got the, that Mass Effect sound, but just like totally overblown. But um, man, when you when you're playing at that level, you know, being uh, being chased by a, a Reaper, it was a really cool moment. I was glad that that they let us score that one. I love to tell big stories that can't just be told in one part. I love that approach and, and I think one of the things that I love so much about video games in Mass Effect in particular is the ability to go along for part of that ride. And I think people who are gamers today don't look at it any different than I looked at Star Wars when I was young. For me to be able to provide the music for that is, you know, I mean, it's a dream come true. Obviously, it's, it's been a huge privilege and honor to have worked on one of the biggest series in gaming history. And uh, it, it feels like it's a great experience having come full circle from Mass Effect 1. It's something that is, has been a big part of my life um, for the past few years. And, and so to see it end is kind of sad, but at the same time, um, very satisfying to be there to help bring it to an end. <laughs>